are here in Orange County and I am sitting with my sister Tiffany and I just kind of wanted to get her take on working for yourself, being a woman entrepreneur and you know the same stuff we usually talk about but today we get to talk about styling, wardrobe styling. So do you want to introduce yourself? Say kind of yeah. like, because I feel like most people they're like, yeah I know what styling is. No you don't. Let her tell you. Um, I'm a personal shopper so I mostly do one-on-one uh, -on -one with regular women, regular men, not as much celebrities, and I help them with their wardrobes, I help them with their closet management, help them with special events, so I'm more on the personal shopping side with private clients. Cool. So I feel like styling seems like very easy to get into, but yet I feel like people, a lot of people flounder. Yeah, I think the hardest part is getting clients. Yeah, so I why don't you talk a little bit, because I mean, how long have you been doing this now? I've been doing it for 10 years, and yeah. so the hardest part is getting consistent, regular clients who are going to stick with you. So you just have to be aware that when you start your business, you're probably going to have to have another job while you're starting, because it doesn't just take off and all of a sudden you have a full-time job, unless you have a big corporate right. styling job. But if you're doing private clients, it's going to take a while to, mm -hmm. to get it together. So how are you, in the beginning, you had, what was your other job you had? Mom. Mom. <laughs> Two shows. Twins. Mom. <laughs> Mom of twins. So what I did is when I had them, I started working with, with clients and it built over the past 10 years to now it's full time. But at the time I had two small kids. So right. that's what I was, that's what I was doing. But you could be working a retail job, learning how to work with women's bodies, men, Learning suiting, learning fit, learning cut, learning brands. There's a bunch brands. of niches within styling. Yeah, and so yeah. any retail job or any retail environment or um, fashion environment would help you with what you're doing on the side. Yeah. So how, you have quite an irregular schedule. And yeah. Now the kids are older. Mm -hmm. But how do you kind of keep that going? Keep the schedule, schedule going? and... Yeah, I mean, I block out time that's going to be my time off, and I don't work on the weekends anymore. That's right, I used yeah. to. And um, I kind of just tell clients the hours that I work, and they have to work within that. The only thing is that some weeks I might have 10 clients, and some weeks I don't have any clients. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really aware that your cash flow is not regular, and that it's also seasonal. So it's really busy in the fall, and it's really busy in the spring, but then you won't be making a lot of money in the summer, or very busy. So. Yeah. Talk about, because I know I used to intern for her, and I feel like you have great relationships with stores. Talk about building that and maybe some pitfalls you've seen other stylists get into, you know. Yeah, I, I think that mind. the key with that is that I worked in retail for so long. Right. So knew I the knew day. the back yeah. end, and I knew that I needed to respect their commission. I needed yeah. to respect what worked for them. I needed to, you know, come in, explain what I was doing, not put stuff on hold for huge amounts of time, not do tons of returns. Um, I think working that side of it helps you to um, then know how to work your relationship in a store. Right. You know, and now and they having, help you. Yeah, having the relationship with the store is key because you really rely on them to give you good service and if you burn bridges it's gonna especially in fashion every person you meet is gonna be in a different position in 12 months you don't know where but they will you'll oh, meet, pop you will meet them again so you can yeah. never you know it's funny one of the young sales guys that I worked with years ago is now the head of this huge department at Nordstrom's like the high-end um, space department and so you just don't know yeah you yeah, know? I mean, I work, there's a lot of people that I work with one time and then never hear from again. And there's people that I hear from, I work with every two weeks. There's other people that I won't hear from them for a year and then they'll be back. And I think it's just knowing that you won't be a perfect fit for everyone and yeah. not to take it personal and just kind of be aware that just because you get this great client, they're not going to stay with you and it's not necessarily what you did. It's just not a great fit. So there are a lot of stylists in general, right? Even a lot of people, she's based in Seattle, even a lot of people like popping up in Seattle yeah. trying to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. How do you, I don't know, you have a very specific style, but you also have to cater to other people. Yeah. How do you keep that all in a balance and keep it all fresh? Right. I think the blog, I have a blog, and so that lets people see that I'm keeping up, that I'm keeping current, that I have personal style. 
It also lets people know what level I'm working at. Like I, you know, I really post high end um, shops. I post high end club, you know. So my services are kind of going higher end, and then um, it puts me at a different level. Then right, you know, and some of the beginners kind of starting. Yeah, out. yeah. So I think that having building your website, building your blog, building Instagram, all of those things help build your brand and give you credibility. How do you, because like I said, you have your own personal style, but you're working right. with other people's style. Oh, How do you do that as, to, as That's well? easy. You just, you when you meet with someone, you really have to be able to figure out what their niche is and not shop for yourself, shop for them. Sometimes, I mean, it's I shouldn't say it's easy, but um, you just have, it's just realizing that you're not there to push your style on anyone and that's never going to work. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out what their niche is and sometimes it's really far from my style and sometimes it may seem not as exciting, but it is when they feel good in it. You, you know, you, that's a gratifying feeling. To have in their closet. Oh man. I mean, it does depend on the person. I mean, you need to have great jeans, great t-shirts, a good pair of sneakers, one pair of heels cool pair of flats, a good blazer, um, a good black dress, and what am I missing? I don't know, maybe a good swimsuit? A good swimsuit <laughs> in when I'm here. <laughs> Alright, thanks. I'll link her blog and her website. Check out her Instagram as well. Sometimes it features cute kids and whatnot. Alright, yeah, you're good. <laughs> I'm like...